and welcome to episode 65 of my podcast, The Pocket Stylist. I'm Lisa Talbot and I'm really excited today because I am being um, joined by a gentleman. So the first gentleman on The Pocket Stylist podcast um, and it is Jag Deep Singh who I met through Clubhouse which is fantastic. Um, Jag, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me today. Lisa, I'm all well. I'm really good for everyone. I'm Jag Deep Singh. Um, I'm based here in the UK, uh, in Slough. Uh, my business is based in Slough. Uh, I live in just outside of Slough, a place called Sippenham, near Taplo, well, Taplo and Sippenham. A lot of people don't want to say, where do we exactly live? But I come, well, I'll always say it is Slough. Um, the largest trading estate in Europe is what I normally tell people. Slough's always got this stigmatism around, oh my God, you come from Slough? I'm like, yeah, look, I'm originally from East London, all right? But I came here back in 2006 purely because my career just brought me to this side. It was easier for me to travel. And that's, that's, that was it. Um, I'm, uh, I own a fine art print business. Uh, I work with a lot of artists, uh, just bringing the art to life. And the work I do is uh, when I print a lot of this work, it gets sold at really high value um, to my art. For my, my artists will sell their work at a very high value. And that, that's, that's, that's a bit about me. I am in the photography industry. I've got a photography business as well. Um, I've got a few things that I have I'm doing, but my main concentration at the moment is that I am just growing and scaling up my printing business. Do you know what? You know, when you said though, I come from Slough, you're not going to believe this. I'm based in Maidenhead. Oh, no. Oh, oh yeah, my think, God. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. So when you <laughs> said that, I'm like, when you said Sippenham, I was like, well, I know exactly where you are. That's, that is what a small world that is. I never knew that about you. So listen to this, yeah. So, you know, you've got the Taplow Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my local. So I go there every day, every morning, maybe I'll go twice a day. If not on the weekend, I'll be there three times. And that's my local. So if you ever want to catch me, that's where you catch me at the top oh of Starbucks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and, and you just can't believe that, can you? When you said that, I was like, oh my goodness. But I want to pick up on, not necessarily where you live, but the fact that you said, obviously you've got the printing business now and what you do. And then you alluded to the fact you've also got a photography business. But when we started this conversation a little bit earlier, you've had quite a few roles in your career, haven't you? And from uh -huh. my perspective, I'm really excited to hear about whether your, your clothing style has changed, adapted um, as you've gone through each career and whether you almost wore different things for, for different roles. I did. You know, it, it'd be interesting. So when I graduated, um, I never used to wear a turban. That's the truth. I used to have a haircut. Okay. So I used to have a haircut <laughs> when I used to be in the, at my college days, well, college university. I was pretty much like short hair, skinhead, and I used to have an earring. And I was very much, you know, in, in that I got to look good because people need me to look good. Yeah, yeah. And I went through a phase, I went through an experience where um, I, I, I was finishing my degree and uh, I, I came home and I hadn't cut my hair and I hadn't shaved or anything. And my mom said, you know, we're going, to a, we're going to a family wedding. Why don't you do this? Why don't you? And I used to wear a turban when I was young. And I stopped wearing a turban. I cut my hair when I was like 16 years old. And my mom said, let's, let's, let's go to a wedding. And I was like, oh, okay. And I knew how to tie a turban, but the fact that I was able to literally naturally just tie my turban. And then it was, well, what do I wear now? I'm going to a wedding. I was, I was from university, you know? I didn't yeah, have, yeah. I didn't have any suits. I didn't have any shirts or anything. So I pulled something together and I still, I can't remember what it was, whatever it was. All I remember is when I went to the wedding, my mom was, you know, my mom, the typical Indian mother, very proud, you know, this is my son. He's like the trophy. Look at him. He's very good. He's very <laughs> clever. He's looking great. Look very smart. And, and people were like literally saying, oh my God, you're very smart. And, and I didn't know whether they were saying I was smart because I was wearing a turban. Yeah. Or they saying I'm smart because of what I was wearing. All I remember is I was wearing like a, like a nice sort of like a, like a dark brown suit with a, with a, with a, with a white shirt. But I, I do remember that I am very particular in the way I iron my trousers. I don't let anybody iron my trousers. It's Still now? Be, even now. If I'm, okay. if I'm wearing trousers, I have to iron them. And I, it's never, ever anyone. It's a very particular way that I, I need these iron. But, um, and, and that was it. And then from then on, I, I got a job. I graduated and I couldn't get a job as a, as a product design engineer. And my, my aunt said, look, you know, the home office is, in, is interviewing. Why don't you go and 
apply for these jobs. And I looked in the newspaper, applied for a job. And I was excited because the role was like executive officers. And I was like, wow, look at the role. That role just says it all, you know. All I was was just an, an off, you know, pen pusher. <laughs> That's all it was. But the role was exciting, an executive officer. I was walking around telling my friends, you know, I'm an executive officer for the home office. I went out shopping and I had to wear some smart clothes. I, and I remember, I remember back then, the only place I could really get clothes that would fit my, my you know, my, my body shape yeah. is go to somewhere like uh, River Island. River Island had a really good selection of clothes. And I remember buying a suit and a shirt and just, just, just to make sure that I got one or two suits. I bought, I bought two suits, a gray one and a slightly dark one. And, and just, a, you know, nice different sh color shirts, lilac shirts, just to kind of like, I was looking around in magazines and things, things, what was going on. And I remember on the first day when I, when I went for my, for my, when I got the job and I started, I was looking around what people were wearing and, and I thought, okay, I, I bought the right clothes. I now got to make sure I kind of fit in because this, the stigmatism was around, I got to fit in. I can't wear something weird. It's only when I then started work you know the more the longer i stayed in the, in the service i started coming across a lot of the old civil servants the leather jackets the shirts which are shabby and the dress sense was back from the 80s and i was like are you allowed to wear this kind of stuff and they're like yeah we're we're civil servants we're allowed to be we're civil servants we don't have money so we, we wear whatever we we want but i used to be very particular in terms of what how i look you got to look smart because you're representing a brand, which was the home office. Yeah. And the shoes had to be always clean. You know, I had brown shoes and I had black shoes. And he was very, very specific around that. That went on. But my transition in my career within the home office was that I became an immigration officer. And that changed the dynamics because that meant I was no longer wearing a suit, but I had to wear special PPE, which was arrest trained officers and doing all sorts. I mean, I can talk about it now because I don't, I don't do it, but I worked at a quite a high level where to the point I was locked up in a room looking at intelligence stuff for, for, for a few years before I decided and said, this isn't for me. But the transition of me, what I was wearing between that time was I, I would have, I would have to wear a suit to court. And the, the, the suit I had to wear was you know, like the pinstripe yeah, yeah. I was representing. And, and, I, and I actually took that advice from someone in court once. And I said, listen, um, I've just joined, I've just joined this service and I just want your advice on clothes. What do you think I can buy? He said, just buy a nice pinstripe suit. It, the judges love that. If the judge sees that you've come in really prim and proper, they're going to take you serious. And I was like, okay, that, that's, that's interesting. And I went off to Oxford. I was at the Oxford police station once and I walked into uh, River Island and I said, and this is my exact words, I need a suit for court. <laughs> the woman they probably me, thought, really? <laughs> the little woman looked at me. She went, okay. I went, that didn't come out right. What I mean to say is that I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to be going to court representing. So I need to wear I need to wear something smart. Could you recommend me a suit? She went, ah, oh, let me give you. So she took me to the aisle. We chose a nice pinstripe suit. Um, and I wore that, you know, I loved it because it just really, it was your like courtroom gang to mm -hmm. you know, that. It, it just, it made me feel like I'm a lawyer or solicitor when I wasn't. But it's really, but you know, it's really interesting what you, what you said, even going right back to when you first had your first role, that the executive, piece yeah. it to you it it made you think right i need to be smart and and smart doesn't need to necessarily be formal but right. for you what was really interesting and you said it you said about you were representing that business and that that for me is 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 key and yes you know we all have our skill sets etc and nowadays it's a little bit more relaxed but at the end of the day, if you work for somebody else, yeah. you that the employees are representing that business yeah. and you were proud to represent that business. And then when you went obviously into River Island and asked for the suit, again, it was that same thing. How do I represent myself well enough as well as the business, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. 
and that's how it's carried on yeah the rest of my life up to now where when i started photographing weddings and when i was photograph and, and i never used to wear a white turban i used to wear a black turban and as i was getting used to wearing the color i the summers were very difficult because wearing black and the heat i used to get lots of headaches and i remember once wearing a white turban and i turned up at uh, terminal three where i was an office an immigration officer there and obviously you know we wore our suits we were smart and i remember um i can't remember uh that, that he was a C he was a chief immigration officer and he, he looked at me and he said now that is very very home office oh wow and he said this is very immigration service and i was like and that's what it was known back then as the immigration service now it's i don't even know what it's called now but it was good that you know it was recognized by a senior officer to say the white turban really represents us as a brand and i was like brilliant and, and, and ever since then seriously lisa i've i've just worn a white turban i've i've never worn any other colors and you know my son's every now and then doubled into saying, you know, hey, wear a grey one or wear this one or wear that colour. For fun, I've worn it, but I've actually just worn a white turban, to be honest, for the last 10, 15 years now. And through that, I've just always used, I'm representing, look, we got down to the point where I don't go out the house without my turban. Yep. I represent my father's name. I represent my family. So for me, it's a sign of respect as well. And I don't want to go out like, you know, yes, the other day my daughter said, you know, we, we, we need to go and do a delivery. And I'd been out all day and I said, listen, I, I, I've got to wear my turban. She goes, look, why don't you just wear the bandana? It's fine. It's what I wear when I go to the gym. She said, just wear that. You're just going to drive me. And I think for the first time in a very, very long time, I actually did that. I actually wore a bandana, went out the house without my turban. It felt like I was naked. I was it just about to ask you what it felt like. It was uncomfortable. I just felt uncomfortable. I, I shared it on my on my uh, Instagram stories, and I had various comments come out and say, "Wow, Jag, you actually did that. How did you feel?" I was like, "Firstly, I was really, really, really uncomfortable, but I just made myself feel that I'm doing a very, very long drive to the gym. So my <laughs> gym is on the top of the road, which is, you know." I, I don't see anyone or anything like that. I literally get there within 10 minutes, park up, go do my bit, come back and I'm at home. But this was a very long drive into more into going into London. But the thing was, is I, this is how I am. So even like mm -hmm. now, you know, like I've got to be here. I, I, I looked at myself. I made sure, you know, look, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm looking fine. What I'm wearing today. And that same thing could take just tracking back is when I even did my photography as a wedding photographer, I made sure that me and my business partner as a team turned up at weddings and looked smart every single time. Yes, we would not be able to wear the full suit and that, 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 but we wore smart clothes where it got recognized that these were the smart Sikhs. And it became one of those things where they would say, oh, the smart Sikhs, this is the, 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 the young smart Sikhs. This is going back in early 2000 when there wasn't that many young, I would say young photographers in the yeah, industry. Yeah. What we had them, what we would call them was the Uncle G's, the uncles, and that's it. They were just people who would be having full time jobs. And one guy would be a full time videographer, photographer, and he would call his pals and say, Hey, I'm going out to shoot a wedding. Do you want to join me? And the other pals would say, Yeah, yeah, let's go. We'll just go have some fun. And they'd get together and go and photograph a wedding. But then come along myself and Govinda, and it was like, We want to change the industry. We want to make mm -hmm. it more professional. And that's how we became. So, and we kind of like set that as a, as a scene to say, we're in an industry where we have to represent ourselves and represent the brand, the, the, the industry. So when we go out, let's make sure we all look smart. So we kind of like set it in that way. And it's, it's been going on, you know, it's been going well in the in our industry for a while, only for, I would say in the last, after COVID, it's kind of got more relaxed with People are not wearing the smart stuff that they yeah, should yeah, be yeah. wearing. And I'm seeing it. And for me, kind of like, I, I, I get a bit kind of like peed off because I just feel you're still representing your brand. You know, you got to look smart. Now, I haven't photographed the wedding for like nearly six, seven years because I've been concentrating on my, on my printing business. But even in my printing business, I go in looking still. You know, I was mentioning earlier on, I, I, wear, I wear this blue, really nice blue T-shirt a blue, an army green, and a gray one. And most of the time, it's the blue and the army green that I wear. Why I wear that? 
I just love those two colors. Um, I've just been so drawn to them. I love the green because it's a military green. I just love it. I have no explanation to say I have links to military or anything. I know nothing. I just love that yeah. army green. It's always been fantastic. And that, do you know, it's really interesting <laughs> for, for the people that can are watching this on YouTube, they'll see the expression on your face. For those that are listening, obviously on the, on the audio side of it, your face comes alive. When you were saying, I love the Navy, I love the green. This for me is like music to my ears because for me, it doesn't matter whether you're a gentleman or a lady, you have to feel, this word feel is so, so important. You have to feel so good in your clothes. And when you talk about the colors that you love, you know that every time you put on either that blue or that green, you're gonna look in the mirror, you're gonna catch yourself in a shop window and you're gonna go, yep, you know what? I love this. So it makes you feel more confident. It creates that positive mindset. And, and you're right what you said, since um, the pandemic, the corporate world and the business world has done a bit of a shift. And interestingly, you know, the, the clients that I work with in the corporate sector, they're now coming back to me and saying, Lisa, I really need your help because what we used to wear in the office, we don't wear that anymore because the business was their priority was to get their employees back into the office rather than they didn't really over rotate on what they were going to wear. So it was more about, let's get you back in. Let's get you feel, feeling comfortable and confident about being back in this office environment, because actually that's what's really important. But I 100% agree with you with regards to the fact of you, you dress to represent your branding because it, it's true, you know, if you saw, um, I don't know, if you went to go and see an investment banker, for example, and they had an, an unironed t-shirt and a pair of jeans that hadn't been through the wash for a month, for example, you kind of go, hang on a minute, A, how much do you care about my business? And B, are you really professional? So clothes have this amazing way of drawing people into you, allowing them to trust you and to show that you're empathetic, show you're professional, show that you know what you're talking about. And it's interesting, isn't it? How what, listening to you, what you've done along the way, you've almost created uniforms for each role that you've gone into. And now the photography side and the printing, what I'm kind of listening to is that you've almost now adapted it to be slightly more informal but you've still created a uniform that represents your brand absolutely you know i, I was i was, I was talking, telling you about the jeans situation earlier yeah on. yeah so like i you know i wear jeans i wear i wear dark blue jeans and, and i really love them they, they fit and and you know I'm, I'm 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 a 32 short and to get a really decent 32 short is is really difficult so I sit between the 31 and the 32 and the 32 I got is perfect. And the only place I get it from is next. Right? Yeah. So next are listening to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Send Dag Deep some jeans. <laughs> no, sponsor this, this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, people will be like, oh, we don't shop in this. Like, look, I grew up in the days when my mum used to go to CNA. Right? Oh, I it remember CNA, them. Right? His mum used to go to CNA in East Ham. And we used to go in and it was like a proper clothes place. And we used to go and we used to come back out with some clothes. And I don't remember what we got, but we got some decent clothes. Then we remember British home stores. BN, is it BN, BNH? B, 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 BHS. BHS, BHS, yeah. And back then that was something else as well, right? So now at the moment, we've got something like that, you know, Next, which I've, I've said, okay, I'm not going to shop in Next. I'm, I'm going to go and shop in Zara. And I came, and I've gone into Zara, and I love this. I love their blazers. I love, I love the, you know, what they do. It fits perfect. It's really comfortable, and I like it. Yes, I've been to a lot of these designer shops. I've been to some really great ones, and maybe it's me, but I, I, I find it very uncomfortable when I've got something on that doesn't feel right. Because what will happen is I'm sitting there, and people will know I'm, I'm just doing You're something. You're fidgeting. Controller. I'm doing this, and I'm, I'm, I'm just, it's just something not right, and, and people will know you've not bought that from where you normally shop, isn't it? I'm like, how do you know? They said, because I can tell, because you're fidgeting. And that's it. But wait, whereas my, my, my jeans I've got, when I buy jeans, I'll buy like three of these in one go. And I've still got 
I think one still brand new pack. The reason why, in case they stop making this, I've still got this and I've got enough time to find the right one, you know? But that's what it is. But I love wearing that is comfortable. Then came the shoes. I used to love wearing these boots. They were, these were very specific caterpillar boots that I wore them. They were fantastic. They were hard wearing. They were brown. They just fit. They went with every single attire that I wore. It, it, it was a great, it was like one of those sort of like rough, ruggedy biker style boots. Yeah, you yeah. Could wear it with any type of clothing. And the day the soul, the item for about six years and the day the soul gave way and they broke, I tried to get these boots and I could never, ever get these boots. And I tell you now, ever since that time, I've never been able to find the right type of casual shoe, you know, shoe, the, shoe, the footwear that I can wear. I recently just ended up buying, um, I was searching on Tai Chi, something on Tai Chi and the trainers came up for Tai Chi. And I thought, I'm just gonna get these. And I ordered a black pair and a white pair. And the white pair is so, so comfortable. It cost me 40, 45 pounds. Yeah. They were so beautiful to wear and they went with everything that I wore. But they were white trainers. But you can't go to certain places <laughs> wearing white trainers. <laughs> so but I've got these other, I've got some other like smart casual shoes that I bought from, I think it was from Zara, and they work really well. I I, I flew out to Goodwood um, with the guys from Clubhouse. And on the day I went, even then I had to make sure. The, hey man, I've been exclusive. I've been invited. I feel privileged that I've been invited. So I've got to look good. I've got to represent these guys that I don't turn up looking like just casual and white trainers, which are dirty and t-shirt, which is not ironed or anything. But I really made an effort that where I was going, that if I'm with them, it looks like that we are from the same team, not someone who looks re really out of place. But I don't do a lot of overthinking with my clothes anymore. Like I said to you, I wear a blue and a green and a gray. And what I do is literally in my wardrobe, it is literally blue, green, gray. And I just literally don't think as I open it, I'll pick the first one out and I'll wear it and I'm done. And it comes back to the whole thing about the more you think about what you get wear on the day, the more energy you've wasted. But I want to preserve that energy for the rest of the day. Yeah, but it's really interesting because what you said then, you said, I don't overthink it. You don't overthink it. But when you went, obviously, to Goodwood um, with the guys from Clubhouse, you yeah. did think about it. You thought about not only how you were going to feel in, in the day, but also how you were going to complement the, the guys that you were going with. And that's exactly what clothes do. Clo clothes have an amazing way of making you feel absolutely brilliant or or not actually too good so it's about making sure that you have clothes that make you feel good and when you said about you know the the the, the trainers for like 45 pound for me it's never about the more you spend the better you're necessarily going to feel it's about the fit the cut the color and it's no different for a gentleman than it is for a, whim, a woman, it's about making sure that you can put those things on and think, oh, I love this. Because that that's the absolute kind of um, the be all and end all. And that's when I say to people, it doesn't matter whether you wear Primark or Prada. If you feel good in it and it looks good on it in it, that's how you're going to feel because you don't wear the label on the outside, Jag, do you? You know, no one knows where it's going to come from unless you say, by the way, this is from... You know, no one knows. Now, let me share this with you. You're going to like this one. So this top I've got, if you buy this as a Hugo Boss, or you buy it as a designer brand, the same one, the same material will set you back anything from 80 to 120 pounds. Yep. I used to do garment printing. And then I came out of that business because it wasn't my business. And in the process of doing that, I came across a supplier who supplies these really good quality t-shirts and garments. These garments are primarily used by a lot of high-end designer wares. Yeah, yeah. But I picked them up for about three pounds. Oh, <gasps> no, <laughs> don't tell my husband because he's a Hugo Boss man. <laughs> Listen, so all I can say to you is, is this. M most probably the most expensive item that i'll ever wear in my body from like on my daily wear 
will be the cost of my turban, which will be more because it's like, I think it's, I think it's five meters and that costs more. It's like seven pound a meter or something like that. My jeans, I think I like 27 or 30 pounds, no more than that. So everything I wear is most really, you know, less than 120 pounds. But the thing is, when I wear these t-shirts, I'm so comfortable. Yep. I feel great. But the point about thinking when I need to, when I need to wear what I need to wear is when I've been invited to something very specific and I've got to assess the audience that I'm going to be with. And that's what's really important for me. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm going to a network event, um, I used to do a lot of networking and sometimes we used to go into the high-end hotels in central London. And there would be a few of us who'd meet up as businesses and we would go in their bar and we would sit in their lounge and have laptops open and things like that. And, and I don't think it would have gone really well if I walked in with, you know, shorts and just looking very not smart because I don't think I would have got the introductions that I've got today. So I think sometimes, yes, it's important for you to play the, look the part, but don't, don't forget, you know, there are going to be people going to say, no, I, you know, I disagree. You can wear mm-hmm. anything you want. You can do whatever you want. Listen, if it works for you, that's great. But for me, I represent myself. I, pre- I represent my father's name first before mine and then my business. And if somebody wants to tomorrow say, yes, Jag, it should be straight away. Oh, yes, I know who you're talking about. Jag, the guy with the white turban. Yes, I know who you're talking about. They should just have that imagination straight away. They shouldn't have that imagination of someone who's, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, I went there, I saw him, he's just wearing a jacket, which was oversized or I don't know. But take care of how you look. That's how I feel. Take care of how you look. Yeah, and do you know what? It's If you're doing something from a business point of view, it's be remembered for the right reason, not the wrong reason. And from my perspective, yes, it is all about the clothing and the grooming side of it and, you know, polished shoes and things like that. Because it says, it says about, it says in, now, in the inverted commas, I care. Yeah. I care about, you know, what I'm going to do to, to represent myself. But I care about the fact of how you think I'm going to come across. And I think that's, I think it's just about, you know, if you, for me, if you go to a networking event, it's about saying, do you know what? I, I'm really pleased that I'm coming to this. I, I'm pleased that you've invited me. I, all that type of thing. So it's about, you've made that little bit of effort. And I think, you know, if you go to, for anyone who goes to a job interview, you're not necessarily, you will not rock up in a t-shirt and a pair of jeans. You wouldn't because that's not, you know, you're going to a job interview. This could be your next career path. This could be your opportunity to earn more money. So you will make the effort to go to that job interview. And, and, and I don't see why anything else is any different. Yeah. You know, right. yeah. true. It, it, it's, it's true. You know, when you, when you were saying this and I was listening to you and I was thinking about the same time and listening is I've learned to empower myself first it's important that I satisfy myself first. And, you know, I, read, I re- started reading a lot of books and one of the books I read was on my Robbins, uh, The High Five Habit back in December, January, this, towards the, uh, the beginning of the fall this year. And one of the first things I, I got from there is that, do you know, acknowledge yourself first. It's so important. And, you know, I'm hoping being one of the first guys, you know, men that you've interviewed and you interview so many more and we learn from each other that, a lot of men, fantastic, it's great, but we do have a tendency of just letting go of ourselves where we don't really care how we look like. But there is a huge, huge number of men who do care what they look like mm. because they want the way they look and the way they dress, it empowers them. And that energy of the way they look and the way they are is spread out. So for me, it's, that's why it's so important that even if I wear the most simplest clothing, yet it projects the energy that I'm, I'm giving and how I am. And, you know, I don't want to wear anything that draws, um, do you know, hopefully I'll be able to send you a photo. My nephew is making me this really vivid colored, like a, a cardigan. It's like a jumper cardigan kind of thing. And um, it's, it's, it's his hand making this. So hopefully it'll be ready for Christmas. 
But I do love those loud kind of clothes because I can get away with those. And I've always worn something sometimes when I've gone somewhere where I can get away with it. Um, but when I do get that, I will share it with you because you'll look at it thinking, shit, Jack, I never actually thought you would have worn that. But you know what? You carry it really well because we've spoken. Yeah, yeah. And that's about, you know, it's so important what, what you said about, you know, from, from everybody's point of view, you know, it, it is about the feel. It's about how you feel in your clothes. And, and I think that, do you know what? I think clothing is a way of self-care as well, because the, the whole fact of how you feel in your clothing is about looking after yourself, which is what you, you kind of alluded to earlier on. And it, it's true. It's about, you know what? It is time. We, we know that the, the world is very busy and sometimes our life gets away with us. But if you can allocate yourself just that little bit of time from a, a clothing perspective to either create this amazing wardrobe or, you know, just have that element of, I love this, I love that. I'm, I'm not gonna have anything in my wardrobe that creates a negative mindset. It's a form of self-care, whether, whether you're a gentleman or whether you're a lady. Um, so yeah, and, and you know what? I think you, you kind of ended my podcast with that wonderful kind of saying, you know? And I think that was wonderful. And I have had the most amazing time talking to you, Jag. Um, and, and I'd love to hear about your whole kind of careers and how you've changed and, and all that type of thing. But I think from, from, from my point of view, what I'd love to take away from this is the fact you said it's about taking care. It's about putting some thought into it. It's about putting a little bit of effort into it. And have I got that right from your perspective? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, self-care, you got to just take care of yourself, take care of the mind. You know, just before we finish, yeah, something that came in my head was I thought, let me reflect on how my father used to be. My, sometimes my father used to dress up in a way we were, we'd were feel embarrassed. And I think learning from my father, my father was very smart. Towards the, after I think he turned 50, he became very smart. But prior to that, he would just wear random stuff, you know, and he would just, we would be really embarrassed as kids, cringing, thinking, oh, shit, why are you wearing that? Don't wear that. It's not good. We're going out. Don't do that. I think that became kind of, um, a reflection on us feeling that I want to wear something at the same time. Yes. I want to represent myself for who I am, what I am, but I don't want to wear something that doesn't really kind of embarrasses my kids. Do you get it? Like me wearing mm -hmm. something and then wearing slippers or something that doesn't really go with me. Do you get it? I don't want to embarrass my, my kids. So now I listen to my kids. I'll always sometimes go to my daughter. If I'm going somewhere, I'll say, hey, look, Hopri, what do you think? Does this go? Or does that go together? Yeah, what do you think? She'll look and say, yeah, yeah, okay. You know what? Change the shoes. Do that to the shoes. Oh, okay, thanks a lot. I actually lean to my children sometimes. You know, my, 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 I've got you know, a 19-year-old, 18-year-old, and 11-year-old. Sometimes I'll ask my 11-year-old, what do you think of my shoes? But it's also involving them in saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. he cares for our opinion as well. Only because I know as I grew up, my dad used to just wear anything. And when we used to tell him, he used to get really, really annoyed. And we need, I don't want that to be with my, my kids. I want my kids to be able to say, hey, pops, you know, we're going somewhere. I think you should wear this. Okay, no problem. Let's do that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That but it still, it still comes back to the clothes, doesn't it? It's really interesting. Yeah, that's it. Oh, Jag, I've had an amazing time talking to you. Just um, for, the, for the people that are listening, obviously on the YouTube as well, just tell everybody where they can find out a little bit more about your, your services that you, you offer now. Yeah, do you know, do you know what? Um, so I'm, 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 I'm Jag Deep. I'm, I'm the owner of a company called Killy Arts. And, you know, if you just type Killy Arts, you know, I'm on Instagram. I, I recently, a couple of weeks ago, created my own personal Instagram page called Jag Deep Club. I'm sharing my journey of learning how to fly a plane <gasps> and um, i've actually separated that from my business because i'm just kind of like creating my own brand people were asking me jag you know you should create your own page personal page i've never ever had my own personal social media account as such so this is the first time i did it's something quite big for me for anybody who knows me really well will know that i would have never done this um, because of certain experiences that i went through so this is the first time i've done it and and, and just come come share my come share my journey of learning me learning how to fly. And, and I, I you know, I, what, what, what do I have to sell? You know what? Hey, I've got, you know, my business brings me enough, you know, and just come share the journey that I'm on. 
and I'd love to meet a people. I just love connecting people together. If you feel that I can connect you with someone, just reach out to me. That's it. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful. What a lovely way to end. So I hope everybody has enjoyed this conversation because I certainly have. And I could have carried on talking to you for a lot, lot longer. Um, so everybody, thank you so much for listening. Um, and we will see you all again soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jag. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. You.